Hi all, my name's Hannah and I'm the C5 Nut. Well, where do I start? Um, I broke me car. My little car, I broke it. Well, I didn't exactly break it. The old um, clutch cable snapped. Um, now, this video is basically me showing you guys how to change a clutch cable on a Fiat Shishento. Um, I've lost count on how many times I've fitted clutch cables, especially on these little cars. Uh, my first car, being a Citymatic, never actually had a clutch cable. It was all electronic and all that. Um, it went a bit faulty. And um, what can I say? I was very, well, I'm one of very few people uh, in the UK that can modify the Citymatic into a standard manual gearbox. Um, so basically the Citymatic's normal gear box and everything else is just a clutch mechanism is slightly different. So on the S, the SX and the Sportins all have a clutch cable. Uh, the Citymatic's have hydraulic, um, sort of like a pump and all the other bits and pieces and stuff like that. So um, yeah, so this uh, video is basically changing the clutch cable. So, uh, what I'm going to do is flip the camera around and I'll show you what we need to really do. So, obviously, I'm in my workshop and we've got Jesse assisting as always. Um, I'll put her on a lead at the moment because I've got quite a few customers out there still. Right, so, obviously, we're back at the engine. First thing to do is undo the Jubilee clip that holds this air filter in. There is one 13 mil. Uh, bolt let's see if we can zoom in oh there's a bolt there um, or a nut there and you take that off this comes out like so which then gives you access to uh, where we need to work so I'll just put that down there let's grab a torch right so that there is the clutch arm and the cable is there on a little bracket that little white thing there uh, there we go now that actually goes down in through the firewall down at the bottom and there's two 10 mil nuts now to get to it you can either jack it up and take the wheel off or i have done in the past is turn the steering hard right and you can just about get your hand in there to undo the nuts so what I'm going to do, uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to take the wheel off so you guys can actually see uh, roughly what we have to do. Okay guys, so I've now taken the wheel off. Um, like I, Normally I don't take the wheels off because I've done so many of them. But on this particular occasion, obviously I want to show you guys how to do it. So I've taken the wheel off. Now, to get you better, see that there let me just see if I can zoom in uh, uh, you see that there this thing here there's two 10 mil nuts and you've got to take those two 10 mil nuts out uh, in order to actually uh, um, to gain access to the clutch cable. Is it gonna work? Yeah. Let's see if I can zoom in. Let's get in there. So that's one of the 10 mils just there. So we've got to do the other one. And uh, once you're taking them off, uh, once you're taking them two 10 mils off, you then got to go inside into the car to then disconnect it from the the pedal box um so yeah i'm gonna undo these and i'll bring it back okay guys so i've now taken them two bolts out which is just up there so what you should be able to do now is grab hold of this and pull it out and there's the other broken bit i do know it's a bit oily around here uh, the cv boots I'm uh, getting quite weak, so I'm going to have to change it at some point. Uh, hopefully not too long. Uh, yeah, I've got to change that. That'll be fun. 
but there's the old part of the old clutch cable and that's what we've got at the top there so strangely enough this actually has a gasket on it my other one didn't have that so uh, that's worth noting that there is a gasket on there so uh, right now let's go inside now and do this one and this will be fun right now there's my ECU for the um, uh, electric power steering that I fitted now this will tend to be underneath the carpet um, it's just it's a bit of a nightmare trying to fit it so I just left it like this um, now the standard so the SX and obviously the sporting models um, there's like a uh, a bracket that goes over this just to protect it um, now lucky enough for me I can just grab hold of it because I've put velcro on it and moved it out of the way now right underneath the dash I don't know if I'm gonna get this on camera but let me just sort of have it there So that there, you see the white clip thing? Um, so that there is the cable and you see that white sort of triangle piece. We've got to change that as well. So, hello Jesse, hello crazy doggy. Yeah, you crazy doggy. Right, so here's the new clutch cable. Um, it is it's quite short isn't it really uh, with that funny looking hook thing on the end now there is a triangle piece that you've got to change now um, Fiat do say that when you change the clutch cable you've got to change this now you notice that there's a small hole and a big hole and that basically clips onto the sort of like pivot thing so underneath the dashboard you've got that hook on the end of this cable there that will go into the smaller hole like so so that goes in like that so this goes through the floor and then that's that triangle piece that you've seen in the video and uh, hopefully it doesn't drop off but you get the logistics of it um, there is two split pins so you've got one for the clutch cable and then you've got the, the big rod that attaches this and then that runs across from the passenger side across to the driver's side. This is all underneath the dash. Um, I, in the past, I have tried to take that whole bar off complete just to, you know, do this. Uh, it's an absolute mission. In order to remove that whole entire bar, you've got to take the whole dash out. So it is a bit of uh, a kerfuffle. And if you're double jointed, you this will be like really easy for you to do um yeah i'm really gonna have to up my meds tonight because i'll be in a lot of pain after doing somersaults trying to get this bloody thing done so right guys i'm gonna crack on and get this sort of changed and then i'll bring you back okay so uh yeah what can i say um my back is killing me it really is oh my god uh yeah um what can i say so i fitted the new cable um it has been a right pain um yeah. sleepy dog hey sleepy dog hello sleepy dog hey jesse 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 hey look, look don't push the camera down crazy dog hey don't push the camera down darling come on right um yeah i'm getting a bit too carried away here with good old jesse jesse uh yeah so um yeah so the new cable's in um i struggled okay 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 i struggled to try and get that triangle piece in 
Um, obviously, you've got the bar that runs from left to right. And um, yeah, trying to get the split pin in there is a bit of a, a mission. Um, now, the one for the cable, obviously, it did have a B, uh, like a, one of them, you know, uh, I want to say the word, and I can't, I just can vision it. Um, I can't pronounce it, but we'll just call it a P clip or an R clip, whatever you want to call it. Split pin, that's the one. <laughs> I'll get there in the end. So, yeah, it had a, a small little split pin. Unfortunately, the split pin was quite uh, weak and as soon as you touch it it just broke off anyway so uh, what i've done is i put a small uh, r clip in there so it means I, at, at a later date i can you know if i need to change the cable again at some point soon uh, maybe in another couple of years time um, it's not too much of a pain now let's have a look underneath i've already got a torch up there so there we go, uh, behind that blue wire, there you go. So new, um, that new bracket thingy, uh, that Y piece. And just on the bottom, I don't know if I can zoom in. Can I zoom in? Yeah, there's a, the, the P clip or the R clip. So uh, yeah. Uh, and that's where the cable goes in through the, the floor there. So let's have a look at the other side. Um, better get me torch out the car before I forget it. Uh, there's so much wiring under there, it's, it's driving me nuts. But yeah, it's, it's amazing on how much wire it is actually in. Well, especially in this car, that's for sure. This car is... Um, very unique in its own right. So let's have a look. So there's a new, there's a new clutch cable, as you can see on the firewall, with the two new 10 mm bolts. And that comes around over to the gearbox. Oh. So that's that there, there. And that then connects to the arm there. So uh, yeah, you, all you have to do is, you see this like white piece just here. You you twist that and that's like a adjustment for the clutch. Um, I've taken the cover off just to spray some um, sort of oil in there. Uh, now at work, we got quite a lot of Kent stuff. So this is like ni 19 in one, whatever stuff it is. It's a PTFE based fast acting uh, penetration and lubricant oil. Um, so I sprayed some of that in on both ends of the cable. Uh, it just helps make it a bit freer. Um, I, all, I always say to people that when you do do the clutch, as you're adjusting it, when you tighten up the, uh, the cable, just like every now and then, just come in and put your foot down on the pedal and just uh, operate it a few times because what you find is is that the pedal will start to sink um, and the better way of doing it is you want the clutch pedal to be roughly in line with the brake pedal um, so that's how it is uh, yeah surprising how I can actually drive this car I mean all the pedals are quite close together and all that stuff but yeah, been driving for these for so long, it's become second nature. Um, so, right guys, so what I'm now going to do is obviously put the wheel back on, which I need to do, put the wheel back on, and then um, put the airbox on, and uh, we go from there. And boof, just like that, everything's all back on where it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, what can I say? What can I say? Can't really say a lot. Um, air box is all back in. Uh, everything's all back to normal. Um, I will say this one was, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Last time I changed a clutch cable on one of these cars, we're talking, oh my days, must have been... 
2006, maybe 2007, and yeah, that, that's like a, a good couple of moons ago, um, yeah. Oh, joys of having cars. Um, believe it or not, this car is, this has got private number plate, and uh, this is the same, well, obviously, M700 Mike Golf Victor, the W is my C5, and then my van is my X plate one, so, let's see if I can zoom in. So, you've got the old 700 MGX, um, it sort of, it's not my initials or anything like that. I don't know if you've seen uh, prior regards to when I talk about my green C5 and how I got the car. Uh, it's actually my best mate who sadly passed away um, back in 2009. And the registration plate, which is on the green C5, is his personalised one. Um, so uh, I like to keep... I like to try and keep all my, um, what's the word, um, all my cars with the same sort of, uh, um, oh, I can't speak. Um, yeah, I want to try and keep the same sort of registration plate, um, you know, with my fleet of cars. I've still got to do the V6, which is getting done uh, fairly soon. All right. Well, Jesse likes to get tied up against the wheel. So, right. Now, obviously, once you have done the uh, the clutch, it's important to make sure you've got the gears working. So I'm gonna put my foot down on the clutch anyway. All right, so the engine's right. Now, clutch is down, put it into gear. Seems to be okay. Just ease off the pedal slightly and just see if you've got any movement. So, yeah now the other thing that you do find with the uh the, the shishentos is even though it goes all right in through like first gear reverse is a bit of a nightmare now it's actually gone into gear quite well and ease off yeah oh look i'm getting movement yeah that's fine so uh yeah my car's back on the road again, which I'm glad about. Um, right, so guys, I've been looking into getting um, this car fitted with aircon. Um, it was an optional extra back in, I think it was uh, 97, 98. Um, I'll tell you what, hold that thought. Let's have a look in the brochure. Okay, so this is uh, the brochure originally from whenever it was. Um, does it say a date? Yep, yeah, the, the 6th of uh, 1998. So, good old cars, eh? That looks nice. Well, wait a minute. Oh, yes! Yeah, it's just missing uh, the orange stripe, which I've got in the boot of the car. Um, yeah, nice little cars. That's the Sporting. So it's got the old rev counter in, colour-coded wing mirrors. Um, you notice that the Sporting has different alloys. Um, the Believe it or not, the Sporting's the only one with the alloy wheels. These are actually uh, steel wheels with... Um, hubcaps on or wheel trims whatever you want to call it uh, it does have the color coded one this would be the sx because it's got the sunroof on it um obviously there's no rev counter uh the rev counter is normally fitted on the sporting it's got a color coded bumpers um yeah nice little cars so that the sx the city matic and also the s would have the 900 cc engine but the sporting had the 1.1 liter engine in um which gives it a bit of a poke this must be possibly the above version because it's got the uh the little headrest things in there um good old steering wheel again this is the sporting one 
Um, now on the sport in on this particular one it doesn't have the aircon now I do know that the aircon was an optional extra um, yeah the usual stuff nice leather steering wheel that's the one thing I've got on my bucket list is the steering wheel um, they've got the sort of carbon uh, fiber effect sort of um, face of plate there which I was thinking of but I did get you know I did come across one up close and it just looked a bit tacky uh, look at this a bloody radio with a cassette yeah that's nuts isn't it this is proper 90s work you know 90s stuff even had an airbag now I have got a steering wheel for the Shoshento with an airbag in it now obviously the um this particular car doesn't have an airbag um i don't think uh does it no the sx also had the airbags in there but it was a mechanical type rather than electrical type the phase one uh shishento's had the mechanical airbag on the driver's side uh, there's no wiring or anything it works on uh forces and inertia and all that stuff uh but the phase two ones um had electric sort of airbag and stuff and they you can pinpoint the difference between the mark ones and mark twos and that's regards to just down on this bottom here now you got let me zoom in you got this little plastic grill now that is normally part of the uh you know the bolts under the headlight jesse you crazy dog yeah normally bolts on the bottom of the headlight say so even jesse likes the car don't you darling Hey, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. You like in the car? Is it back on the road? Is it, Dallin? Is it back on the road? Um, yeah, so the phase two, Jesse, the phase two, uh, this plastic thing is actually part, you know, it's incorporated with part of the bumper. Um, so, yeah, right. Let's see if we can get the option for aircon. So it's even got a leather gear knob, which, again, that's something I want to get. Uh, yeah, the good old, um, good old SX. And these are is what I mean about the engine sizes. So the sporting model is a 1.1 liter engine uh, with 54 horsepower, uh, maximum speed 93. The Citymatic, the SX, and the S obviously have the nine. Sorry, the 899cc. 39 brake horsepower and it's 87 miles an hour now i will say this is incorrect i know that for a fact i've had both the sporting models as well as the um the city matics and obviously my s model now these cars flat out and i mean put your foot flat to the floor and the maximum speed is 118 miles an hour but obviously they don't tell you that in this um and obviously the 45.6 miles per gallon uh that's also wrong is a bit higher than that you get around about 55 to 60 on one of these um yeah then it talks about the old uh system uh the old i think that one looks like uh that's the city matic because it's got an ecu which is bolted to the gearbox uh, let's see if I can zoom in. So that's the ECU that's normally bolted to the gearbox and you've got a hydraulic pump which then operates a uh, slave cylinder which then operates the clutch. Oh, we're zooming out here. All right now there's a wire that comes across to here. Uh, that does the engine side of things. So hang on a second, bloody. Um, and then when it goes up to the top here, that's there's a little sensor just inside the gear knob and as you move the gears from you know forwards and backwards it disengages the clutch um, And then obviously there's a sensor on the engine that runs off the throttle pedal So as you increase the RPM on the engine, it will then engage the clutch um, It's really like really weird driving. I mean, it's like driving a manual but without putting a clutch down it's really really weird um yeah uh she's a nice pretty lady 
when does she like C5s? <laughs> oh my God, right, okay. And then it talks about the old power steering. You know, it's all electronic and then you've got the pump. Well, we all know about this, don't we guys? Yes, we know that. And then obviously the construction, you know, the sort of like stress points and things like that. Again, nice looking car. Uh, playing it safe. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Sporting, again, you know, with a nice, you know, these are called Michael Schumacher edition bumpers. And they've got the old little lights and stuff. Um, 13 inch wheels. Um, yeah, this is all the sporting equipment. What it's got, colour coded bumpers, mirrors and special bumpers. Yeah, they're special, all right. Front anti-roll bar, alloy wheels, uh, front fog lights. Defective side stripes, aluminium sports accelerator pedal. Yeah, we haven't got that. Rev counter, sports seats, leather covered steering wheel and gear knob, and the old uh, radio cassette or single CD player, which is quite bizarre. Um, yeah, the difference between the City Matic and the SX, there's no difference, it's the same car other than the gear stick. Um, again, you know what you get there and all that stuff is basically the same as that one um just notice it's got a rear ashtray on that one and doesn't look like it's got a rear ashtray on that so that might be difference um yeah four speed heat circularization looking fuel cap tinted glass blah 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 uh, it says about power steering on here now. Uh, it says all equipment on the S. Um, Citromantic standard equipment, all equipment on the S version plus. So, yeah. Um, I will say that the SX do have power steering. Um, I don't know why they didn't mention it on here. Uh, um, so, this is my car that I got here. Well, was that car it's it's basically an sx but it doesn't have the sunroof on it um yeah just the old basic stuff black bumpers that was a reason why i didn't go for um let me zoom out this is the reason why the car's got two colors um obviously it was just plastic bumper you know like your everyday bit of plastic a bit of tat uh same sort of colour as what's on the, uh, the, you know, the mirror there. Um, it was just, it was just awful looking, um, and it had a crack in the bumper. So, I treated it to these Michael Schumacher edition bumpers. Um, it keeps it in within. Okay, the styling's different, but it's still technically different. It wasn't colour coded to the car, so you know it's. Uh, it's still keeping its sort of S model, even though it's not. It's, uh, I call it a custom, really. Um, yeah, standard. Uh, the funny thing is, on the S, there is no anti-roll bar. So, literally, uh, anti-roll bar is when you go around corners, like, really quick. It's, you know, helps stabilise the car a little bit. This sucker hasn't got one. Um, so... When you do chuck it through the corners, you do get a lot of body roll on it, um, which is quite entertaining. Um, now, there is one called uh, Electra. Now, Electra's really, really rare, uh, really rare. So I can't pronounce my words then uh, for a minute. Now, they only did electric version, and it was only in Italy they brought it out. They didn't bring it out anywhere else. Um, I have been trying to get my hands on one of these, actually, and at the moment, there's just no one there selling. I mean, check that for a gear knob. You just select whatever you want and just hit the power button, and you just plug it in when it needs charging. Um, yeah. Again, really nice car. Um, yeah, I was thinking of going for two-tone. I didn't bother. And um, all that, you can get a rack and all that stuff. Or a spoiler. I might get a spoiler for the uh, the old uh, Shishento. Don't really like this steering wheel. It's a bit too cheap. Uh, pedals look a bit, well, crap. Um, so, yeah, this is basically like the, color, the colors you can get. Um, 
different, you know, different bits and bobs. Um, now let's see if we can find something on here that says about aircon. Oh, Jesse's moaning in the background again. Crazy dog. Uh, now where is it? Mm, doesn't say. Let's have a look on this one. Still in common. No, just usual stuff. Oh, look! Air conditioning. Right, so air conditioning was... I really should put my glasses on and I didn't. Uh, where's the key? Right, so apparently the dot is optional and the line is not available. So if we go to, oh, and the, the two lines is available August 2000, sorry, 1998. So that will be available. Uh, the air conditioning, let me just zoom in, air conditioning. So that will be available after August 1998. And when we look at it, so it is uh, not available for the S or the SX or Citymatic but it is an optional for the sporting and um, that's what we're sort of well that's what I'm sort of looking into really is um, next project for this car is I think we should get some aircon in it uh, but I'm going to need a lot more time for that because there's a lot more electronics involved I have been looking on the Fiat forums and there was quite a few people who actually have fitted it to this type of engine. Basically it fits in where the uh, alternator is and the alternator sort of sticks up higher, it sort of bolts to it. Um, there's not a lot of room in there at the moment so you can imagine the alternator is going to be like up here somewhere. So um, yeah, that's something worth thinking about for the future. Um, yeah, what can I say? Um, yeah, would be cool to get aircon on this. Right guys, as you can tell, I'm a bit dirty and sweaty and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to leave it here because it's too hot in this workshop. I didn't put the aircon on, the door's wide open. I'm still waiting for a customer to come and pick up one of their vans, so... Didn't really want to close the door without them thinking that you know we're closed and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it here for a minute, guys. If you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And just may, just may, I might make another video. Take care, guys. See you soon.